Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Uh, We're coming at you on October 2nd, 2020. Uh, still kind of a lot of crazy stuff going along. Uh, we still have some COVID uh, shutdowns and craziness. Uh, uh, still some embers of riots going on in some places in the country. Uh, but uh, uh, we're going to uh, jump into all that. But uh, first, let me introduce our panel to you. Our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word, Brathway, last in Liberty. And up in our right-hand corner, we have... Oh, excuse me, and, and uh, Leon is a retired engineer from the state of California. Up in our right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett, who is a pilot in the state of California. And I'm your host, Jason McPhee. And <clears throat> we also uh, wanted to let you know as well, we have a, uh, 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 wake on email address where you can uh, send comments to uh, Libertarian Counterpoint uh, uh I think it should be streaming in a second bit. Uh, counterpoint uh, at libertariancounterpoint.com. And so if you have any uh, comments or if you wanted to uh, send us any any uh, of your experiences about being shut down or impacted by COVID or the riots or uh, or if you're a Cal Exeter as well, we'd love to hear about any of those things and we'll be able to use some of that on a show in the future. Okay, so jumping right into some of the news today. Uh, we have a, a new uh, executive order here in California uh, signed by our governor uh, that says uh, they're going to be requiring diversity on all corporate boards. So essentially, it's uh, it's kind of a quota for public entities or, and uh, yeah, you know, I mean, or, or private entities rather. So uh, you know, corporations that are headquartered in California. So this is you know, kind of a I guess a sign of 2020 issues on race that are just sort of up everywhere, uh, but uh, certainly, you know, potential intrusion into private enterprise. Uh, do either of you guys want to jump in on that topic? Well, I'm going to start well, first. Go ahead. Because I want Leon to have the last word, because he <laughs> is the last word. And every time I follow him, I cannot compare uh, or, or uh, e- you know, even equal his uh, his contribution. And so rather than being the tail end Charlie again, I would like to jump in quickly. And uh, and this... Uh, the, the, the eagle has spoken. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the screaming, so that I, the screaming uh, eagle has spoken, yes. Yeah, screaming eagle is screaming first, too, <laughs> don't forget. So, so the... Uh, the, the thing I was wondering, is this really an executive order? Uh, the the article linked to the, that you had sent us, Jason, says something about it being a signatured, uh, signature that he put on. And, and I, I, it, it seemed like it was associated with some legislation. Um, it is. It, There's it is, some legislation it, associated with it, yes. Okay, all right. So, so it's a legislated thing. And... Um, <laughs> You know, all I can say about it is, uh, if <laughs> if the taxes and high cost of living weren't enough to drive companies out, and the regular, well, there there it is. I mean, a regulatory uh, environment that's not um, uh, friendly to to business. I mean, if there ever was uh, an environment unfriendly to business, uh, telling corporations. Who they have to have on their boards uh, the pri- of a pri- <laughs> of a private company um, is, is smacks of, of public ownership without really owning. I mean, you know what what amount of money are they uh, fronting to um, to get the ability to tell the co- corporations who to have on their boards? Uh, are they? Are they buying stock? Is the is the state of California now in the business of buying stock in these corporations? No, they, they just want to tell everybody what to do. Uh, so um, ridiculous, re- absolutely ridiculous. And if I was a corporation that was on the fence about staying in California or leaving to more business friendly states that don't tell you who you have to 
put on your your board of directors, you know, um, and what quota of, you know, of certain of certain minorities or, or whatever it might be. I mean, you know, where's it end? You know, okay. Well, you don't have enough American Indians on your board. You don't have enough Pacific Islanders. You, you don't have enough uh, people from uh, who you name it. You know, I mean. <laughs> all right. Anyway, that's that's all I have to say. And so now we have the last the word the last <laughs> coming up. It's not. It is, it is not that who they're telling to put on the board is a problem is they're telling who to put on the board and what criteria to use to determine who should go on those, on, on those boards. This is an unimaginable invasion into the operation of private corporations. And Tim, you're absolutely right. We have enough problems to keep in business in California. This is going to drive them out even further. And look at it. Who is going to benefit from these things? It's not some single mom living in, in, in some black neighborhood is going to benefit from this. No, it's well off blacks are going to benefit from it. Like all other programs they have for or oh, to help minorities. I wish, I wish, my prayer is that these people, these white liberals will stop trying to save us. I really wish that because they are not doing any good for anyone other than a few well off people who would be doing just fine anyway. I don't need these people to save me. And I sure there are a lot of blacks in America don't need white liberals to save them, but they keep coming. Oh, they always have these wonderful programs, these wonderful ideas. And this last thing is the thing that's going to put us over the top. It is ridiculous and it's racist. That's what it is. Because yeah. in the article that you sent, the first thing they said, oh, we have corporate racism because blacks are underrepresented, only 2% on the board. So what? The NBA is 85% black, and we're only 13% of the population. So I guess there's a problem here for white people in the NBA. When this nonsense is going to stop? Please. Not, not to mention, that, was, that was quite a word. Quite a word, yeah. Not to, not to mention the age, uh, ageism. They have, yes. I guess, Tell you know, this us thing. old guys in the NBA, I mean, old white guys, <laughs> yeah. are really miss, uh, are underrepresented in the NBA, yeah. so we well, need well, to we, have, yeah. Well, we, we don't have many, you know, uh, you know, 18-year-olds on the boards either. I mean, are we going to need to get that? Next, I don't know, maybe, maybe we need, you know, high schoolers represented as well. Yeah. <laughs> and I sure they, have, they don't have... Many um, foreign-born um, Trinidad guys uh, who are immigrants who speak with a strange accent on their boards either. So I need Makota too. Yeah. And, and by yeah, the way, it's, my, my, oh, it's an insult. Uh, it's, it's an insult uh, to uh, you know to the people they want to get on these boards. It's like, well, if it's if we can't mandate it, you know, uh, then you guys have no chance of being on these boards. You know, we That's have right. to mandate that yes. because you're so untalented that we, you know, you're not ending up on these boards anyway. So we got to we got to make uh, pave the way for you to do it by excluding uh, maybe more capable people sure. that, sure. Uh, you know, that, and and by doing that, that um, <laughs> that ease of entry uh makes it uh, more, uh, it motivates people not to try hard enough to get the skills to become welcome on boards by their own skill level instead you know, yeah, scare, of- the skill and merit, exactly, yes. Right, yes. by the color color of skin they were born with or, or you know, whatever parameter they, or the sex they were born with, that kind yeah. of thing, because it, it was started off with the women being underrepresented. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's got nothing to do with the content of your character. It's just the exactly. color of your skin. Exactly. So here we are. Yeah. And you know, well, you and know, know that, and that, that's an important point. You know, you know, we, we had this big civil rights movement and Dr. King told us, you know, he wants his children to live in a nation where they are judged by the, yeah. by, not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Yeah, that's and every move, live. I'm sorry. That's where I want to live. Exactly. Yeah. But but look at what's happening now. Every single move we make now 
is to judge by the color of the skin, which is in direct opposition, in direct contradiction to what Dr. King said. And you know, these people, these very same people like Gavin Newsom and all these Democrats, Team Blue, as Jason like to say, who want to push these sort of things down our throats, these are the people who embrace Martin Luther King. Oh, Dr. King, he was a man who led us to the civil rights movement. Well, then go for God's sake, look at what he said. We want to live in a nation where we are judged, not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. Yeah. Well, um, and, and I also wanted to point out, too, that, yeah, you guys were right. I, I, I'd mistaken uh, when I said it was an executive order. It was actually a law that was signed. So, uh, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, apparently he's been signing a lot of executive orders lately. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. all kinds of nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> this is just one, one, one of many. But, um, yeah, uh, before we move on to the next point, yeah, that's one thing that you know generally you know markets tend to you know an irrational bias is generally something where you know you, you have some bias that has nothing to do with the performance of the product or the or or whatever it is the unit that's being uh, measured and and so obviously skin color on a board is you know kind of like you know uh does that really the final metric that you want to be looking at? and so you know an irrational bias is something a lot it's tend to deal with, you know, and you can see this in sports, uh, you know, well, without uh, government action, you know, uh, black people became the, the majority in sports, well exceeding their actual, you know, uh, representation in the sport, you know, and it's just because it, the skin color really had nothing to do with the metric of success. So, uh, you know, it's just, you know, it did really just looking at performance and, and, hey, these guys are doing better. And, you know, for whatever reason, you know, there could be some economic underlying things or whatever, but hey, whoever's doing the best, that's who we're going to take. And, and you know, that kind of overrides a lot of those irrational biases, even to the point where, you know, we saw that owner of the Los Angeles Clippers who was clearly a racist, but, you know, he, he hired black people and paid them the going rate. He didn't, you know, exactly. uh, exactly. Uh, you know been a loser. They took away the team anyways. You know, where in the world, where in the world have you seen Every ethnic group is perfectly represented in every field of endeavor. Where do you see that anywhere, anywhere in the world? It does not happen. People yeah. make different choices in their lives. I come from a family of nine, okay, nine, nine siblings. I have eight siblings, nine of us. And all of us do all sorts of different things. Did, did it work out all perfectly? There are two engineers in the family, myself and, and one brother. But beyond that, people do all sorts of things. Who could make these determinations that even within a family, we can't get everybody to equally represent as the way somebody said it should be, but we think we could do that in the society at large. It is ridiculous. This is racist nonsense. And we're going all the way back to Jim Crow, okay? We're going all the way back to Jim Crow. We're trying to determine who's black and who's not, and who should get benefits because of their skin color, and who should not. Just, just based on how, much, how dark their skin is, we're going to make determinations about their movement in society. Yeah. These, these these things are so corrupt, it's unbelievable. Well, and in order to move us along just a little bit on the side of this whole Gavin Newsom thing and California law, uh, there's uh, on the national level, has recently, uh, you know, banned some of this uh, diversity training that's been going on inside of government agencies. And I think that also may it uh, may impact some of the schools as well that get funding. I'm not quite sure, if, you know, on that end of it. But certainly he made a, you know, kind of a splashy statement that, you know, hey, some of this diversity training that's going on to, you know, the, where, you know, essentially it was making the assumption that, you know, if, if you're, you know, if, if you're what, white male essentially you're guilty of something was essentially the way a lot of this stuff was framed i guess you know instead of you know just having a conversation i guess but anyways uh that was that's currently being uh banned by executive order from trump so uh, do you guys have any thoughts on that timmy you want to go again it's fine uh, yeah i should if i had any uh, <laughs> any i was trying to look that up uh and uh this was it has a term. What was the name of the term? Crit there? Critical race theory. That's it. Critical race theory. Yeah. Um, and uh, part part of its uh, parameters is that uh, the United States was founded on racism, and it's it's a bad, evil entity. And and if you really want to uh, fix it, you gotta change everything about it. And 
get down to the core and make it more uh, uh, co collectivist is is essentially what I what I'm hearing. As if as if collectivist nations are founded on on racial equality. Uh, such yeah, me this. you know such such uh, wonderful examples as Stalin's uh, Stalin's Russia, for example, or yeah. uh, you know the the Soviet Union. Uh, founded deeply rooted in making sure everybody had freedom and equality and all that well they they maybe tried to make sure everybody was equally miserable but yes and they succeeded at that but, they always uh, they always produce that one always yeah yeah so so anyway i mean uh so maybe trump is on to something here uh you know i, I mean i, I kind of I kind of wish they would change the name of these executive orders, no matter who comes up with them, to dictatorial orders, but uh, <laughs> uh, which is a little more accurate than executive. executive. Uh, or it could be uh, that they're thinking they're executives of a company and that they own the company and can tell it whatever you know they want. I mean, guide it in any direction. I certainly Trump has uh, displayed that uh, propensity he wants you know it seems like he's um, always interested in uh you know running the ship from you know he's the captain and by golly uh, he, uh, forget about this uh this whole constitutional setup we have here of a federalized republic now we're just gonna I, i'm i'm king or i'm the executive so I just wish they'd change it to just dictatorial orders because these guys are pretending to be dictators <laughs> all over. That's it for me. Well, I, so, I mean, yeah. before before I, 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 we get into the real issue, I mean, uh, executive orders really and truly, I mean, as long as the voters could speak and the new president, well, assuming he don't get reelected also, uh, assuming he's termed out, if a new president could get in there and change the, the previous president executive order, I don't have a problem with executive orders per se. But I could see a point that it's, it sort of gives some sense of dictatorial powers. But, but that, that, that aside, you know this critical race theory is nothing, a bunch, uh, nothing but a bunch of racism repackaged. Because if you look at what they're talking about, they're talking about egalitarianism. They're talking about justice. They're talking about, oh, all these nice inclusivity. They always use these nice, wonderful words to do what they want to do, which is new racism. All we're trying to do here is to destroy whiteness. Okay, that's all they're trying to do. Anybody who is white, they are guilty of something. They are guilty of their past sins, of their forefathers who enslaved poor me. You know what I'm saying? That's what they're, they're guilty of. And they're going to pay for it now. You see, the whole problem is that, yes, they want to have this good conversation about all our things, all the, all the racism of the past. Well, okay, fine, let's have the conversation. But if there were racism, if there's racism of the past, there were racists there. And who are those racists? So as soon as you want to start talking about racism of the past, I'm fine with that. But let's talk about the Democratic Party because their role was predominant in the racism of the past. You want to bring that into the present? Let's talk about it. But don't pretend to me, oh, you're going to save me and save black people and don't want to talk about who did the evil in the past and just blame every white person you see. Because we always want to complain about black, about profiling. Oh, black people are profiled by the police in particular. Well, what do you think we're doing when we're blaming whites for everything that go wrong in this society? What do you think we're doing? I'm just going to look at you guys, Jason and Tim, and oh, you know, you guys guilty, you know? You guys guilty of doing something to me. I wonder what is that? So all these stupid white liberals who think they, they owe me something, I'll take $10,000 per person, and, and I'll, I'll forgive you. $10,000, that's all I want, and I'll forgive you forever. Just give me $10,000, all of you. Put your money where your mouth is and stop this damn nonsense, please. <laughs> that's why we call him the last word in liberty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Leon yeah. wants them to be a little more focused about the, the what who, what white people are re, we're really referring to is the Democrat white people yes. more than the Republicans. <laughs> yes. that, historically speaking, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, you know, and and, and uh, you know, speaking of, I guess, uh, 
you know, that group of white Democrats, I suppose they're probably more interested in shopping at Target nowadays because Target oh, has yes. a special label now where you can identify exactly who it is that makes your business by race. So if you are a yeah. person of color, you can now have your goods. Uh, this was uh, instigated back about a couple months ago. Target put this out, I think. But, you know, since we're really diving down that race uh, rabbit hole in this particular episode, let's, uh, you know, let's find out where if you really, if that's really important, where you buy your goods, Target will help you out. And they now have a way to you can isolate products based on race. Do you guys have a thought on that? Well, I mean, they can do it <coughs> if they want. <coughs> Excuse me. I guess, I guess it's uh, maybe a, a marketing thing, uh, you know, a, a, they're trying it out and seeing how that, you know, throwing it up against the wall, see what sticks. And maybe that's uh, going to stick. Uh, maybe it'll, maybe it will increase uh, total sales or something. I don't know. Uh, they certainly have every right to do that, I think. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I wish them luck. I, I don't know that it would uh, necessarily make me choose one product that I preferred over another one that was black owned just because it was black owned. Uh, uh, you know, I don't, and that doesn't mean that it's a bad product or not as good as the other ones, but I particularly like, like I like Apple as opposed to Android. Okay. That doesn't mean Android's not good. It's they're, they're clearly a, 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 a good uh, brand of, of a uh, smartphone. Because a lot of people use them. If they were so horrible, then people wouldn't buy them as many as they do. So I could I could want a product that was uh, that was not in this list of black owned products over and and like it better and buy it. I I would assume that's what I would do. I don't can't see myself or too many people. Maybe some would go in and say, well, I really don't like this as much as that, but I'm going to buy this because it's black owned. Yeah. That's, All right. Yeah, what do you think, Leon? Well, I mean, you you're absolutely right, Tim. Okay, Target is a private company, and they should they should be free to do as they please in terms of who they want to have uh, contracts with or who they want to market market in terms of products and that kind of stuff. I have no problem with that. Yeah. The problem I have is the hypocrisy involved in these things. If you look at the commercial, there's a woman in the commercial. I think she's the founder of this particular product, is Honey Pot or something like that, and she said, "Oh, the next time." A, 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 a black girl comes along with a good idea, at least I could have done some kind of stuff and things like that. The problem is, if a white person said, the next time a little white girl comes along with a good idea, oh, we're going to have all sorts of screams of racism and they want to cancel that person. That is the nonsense I don't like. The hypocrisy involved. Yes, Target is a private company. Yes, they can do as they please if this is what they choose to do. If they can survive in the marketplace, that's up to them. But I don't like the hypocrisy involved in some of these things that is going on. Okay. Well, you know, and I, I can't, you know, quite imagine to what must be going through somebody's head as well if they're so racist that they're sitting there with a roll of a toilet paper or something and they're saying, was it black made or white made? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, just, you know, but uh, yeah. I, guess I mean, they can they at least floor. make, they can at least make the black, made toilet paper a dark black color or something. <laughs> I guess I guess it'll, it'll wipe my ass a little cleaner, I guess, yes. <laughs> well, that's the sound of our knucklehead noise patrol. So, you know, in diving a little deeper on this, you know, this can really show you where the craziness goes on this topic, you know, the, 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 the kind of perverted thinking when people really get down to isolating everybody by their skin color. Uh, our government, uh, through the Smithsonian Museum, um, recently, uh, uh, it was the Smithsonian National Museum of African American Culture, uh, had a page on whiteness, of all things. So, And essentially what, what, what it says, there was a description that says, uh, whiteness and white racialized identity refer to the way white people, their customs, cultures, and belief operate as the standard by which all other groups are compared. Whiteness is also at the core of understanding race in America. 
whiteness and the uh, normalization of white racial identity throughout America's history have created a culture where non-white persons are seen as inferior or abnormal. Now, that's your government putting that together, you know, and, and putting that out through a national museum, essentially, to, to you know, uh, promote this kind of stuff. And we actually have a graphic of how bizarre it is. And let me see if I can share that right now. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pull up this graphic here. Was okay. that a, a state or was that federal? Oh, that's federal, federal. That's federal. in Washington, D.C., that's uh, part of the uh, Museum. Uh, so now here we have uh, part of an image of this uh, banner that they had, and they, they actually pulled this down, but you can see some of the nonsense. They say these are aspects and assumptions of white culture, and they got enough, uh, fortunately, there was enough, you know, people who objected to this that they pulled it down eventually. But, you know, look, look at some of this stuff. They say it's whiteness to... Uh, have an emphasis on the scientific method. Objective, rational, linear thinking is whiteness. Quantitative emphasis. That means essentially mathematical thinking is whiteness. I can't think of a more offensive racist thing to put together. I mean, how perverted wow. your mind must I think, be. I think to, being, to on time, being on time on that list, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Was it's, it's all time. Time. yeah uh, there we go. Yeah, and it's just that the list is a little longer. Unfortunately, this is a truncated list, but yeah. it's it, it's just absolutely terrible. You know, some of the some of the things they're thinking. You know, like uh, individual uh, self reliance. That's a white thing, apparently. You know, I it, it's just you know how perverted your thinking must be to assume that these are white characteristics. I just yeah. it, it's beyond yeah. the pale to me. Um, I'm gonna pull it down now so we can. Do you guys have some thoughts? Boy, it, I'm going to let Leon take this one because I feel because he's black, he's more qualified than I am to. No, no, to no, no, us. no, no, I mean, no, 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 Tim, no, 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 please, no, 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 not because I'm black, okay, not because I'm black. Because you're on time. <laughs> I'm, unlike, unlike our host. Yeah. <laughs> Who is white? Who, is white? Who happens to be white? Yes. <laughs> right there, that whole thing. <laughs> so I guess I, my whiteness has been pulled away from me. <laughs> Whatever that means. Yes, yes it has. Yeah, but Leon, how about you give us your take? Because, because you're not crazy. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, this, that's this is the government doing this. At least they're funding this thing. They're funding this thing, okay? But you know, slavery was legal. Jim Crow and segregation was legal. And now they're making this damn nonsense legal too, okay? Because the government is funding it. They're teaching our children, they're teaching our children that basic things, things that the market have determined is valuable mm -hmm. to, for us to go forward in life, they want to make those things illegal. They want to make those things unpalatable. They want to make those things as something horrible that black and brown and everybody else should, should ever engage in because it's so horrible. Imagine that. Something is wrong with being self-reliant. Something is wrong with being on time. Something is wrong with using science, data, and facts to analyze any situations. Oh, you're thinking white. Oh my God, that's a horrible thing. This is the problem we have in America today. George Orwell is so correct. This world is turning upside down where good people are becoming bad and bad people are becoming good. And we better change this and change it fast. Otherwise you're not gonna like the America that we're gonna have to live with in a few years. Yeah, and, and this, this was a perfect example of how perverted the thinking could get, but that's about the end of our time. So. No, sorry, uh, we can't get more into it, but, uh, you know, thanks for joining us today. And, uh, you know, like I said, that uh, you can catch our shows at Facebook, uh, Libertarian Counterpoint, uh, or LibertarianCounterpoint.com. And, uh, you know, we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Thanks for joining us.